You always hear me speak about the Siege of Malta. Understand it's not... A, it really isn't about my Maltese heritage. It just happens to be a coincidence that my heritage is Maltese. My ancestors were heavily involved. And the Knights of Malta are the Knights of Malta. But put all of that aside, the me part and me speaking of it in that way, I'm, I... I am interested in the siege of Malta for its intrinsic military value because I'm going to tell you that it's not only an entire subject on its own it's more elaborate than Sun Tzu and Sun Tzu is a great classic it's I'll even uh, uh, marine US marines to this very day read it in their daily material it's 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 very, very ahead of its time. It's very universal. It's very timeless. Sun Tzu is an advanced reading, as many Chinese uh, uh, materials and other materials, like Klaus von Clausewitz, etc. Many great manuals. But you're only talking about books. Real examples are always going to be 100,000 times better, especially if they're completely documented. Do you get what I'm saying? So you can have all the books you like. And manuals are great, but manuals are generally good for how to build an electronic robot, how to fix a car, how to build a boat. When it comes to military matters, you need to do an apprenticeship. You need to be on the ground. You need to understand it. You need to be raised in it. You need to be on the battlefield. Otherwise, you don't know anything. And then you need to analyze it. What actually happened, the real historical value. And it's only then you can use books as a comparative analysis. You can say, oh, this is the material. It says this happened. And you can start putting pictures together, but it's exactly that, pictures, images, and that's what you analyse. So I've been analysing the Siege of Malta for 20 years, almost, yeah, about 20 years. And I'm telling you now, without, a sh without any shadow of doubt, I always learn something new. Okay, it went on for four months. Every day they did something uh, revolutionary. And they did so many different things from so many different angles. It's, I am 98% certain the Siege of Malta is the greatest historical example in world history of military might at its finest. Okay? Now, you're probably going to go, wow, really? Yeah, definitely. The principles, the, uh, the intelligence, the... Everything the Knights did, you just can't compare it. When you study it, because you, what I'm saying is you can't just pick up an entire book and, oh yeah, oh fuck it, look, Ernold Bradford, Bradford he's, he wrote a pretty good book. Oh yeah, that's it, I know everything about the Siege of Malta now, I've read the book. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. Yeah, you've got some information there, but you've got you've to analyse it from every fucking conceivable angle. You've got to understand what actually happened there. You've got to see it in real life. You've got to... There's so many things you've got to factor. And then you've got to wonder, has information been passed on? How do the modern Maltese people behave? How does this happen? Why did they do this this way at the siege? Blah, 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 blah. You get my point? I'm telling you that after studying every angle, I'm convinced that that is the pinnacle of warfare, the siege of Malta. There is no better example. Okay, it was a siege, but it was warfare. It doesn't matter if it was a siege or it wasn't a siege, or if it was a head-to-head -head clash, like the Scots, you know, against the English or some old-fashioned whatever. It, it War's war. Okay, and it's the greatest example of fighting a war in human history. I'm, com I'm, com I'm absolutely convinced of that. Absolutely convinced. And that's why Voltaire said in the 16th century there is nothing more famous than the Siege of Malta. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that's in comparison to the Siege of Alessia, the Battle of Actium, the Crusades, <laughs> for all of the Western Roman Empire, the three, the Brave 300, all those, everything that they've ever known. And Voltaire's like, no, nah, no, nah, there's nothing greater than the Siege of Malta. And we saw World War II, but that's different. That's got to do with machinery. Things became mechanised. That has nothing to do with battlefield brilliance or tactics and all that sort of stuff. I'm telling you now that if I, if ever I was successful in my defence of anything, if there was such a thing, maybe you know something I don't know, 
maybe I have an enemy of 10 million strong. If I was winning, I'm telling you now, it's because of my... First and foremost, I use the Holy, the New Testament as the foundation of my, all my tactics and strategy. But second, the Siege of Malta. Yes, you heard it right. I couple the Siege of Malta and the New Testament together. That leads me to what I call strategic brilliance. And nothing can beat that. I'm convinced. So if you know a thing or two that I don't know, that I've maybe gone against some invisible enemy that I wasn't aware of, and I somehow survived, it's because I studied the Siege of Malta. Now, interestingly, I want people of a Turkish or even Middle Eastern background to study the Siege of Malta. It's not about, like I've said millions of, millions of times in all the videos I've made regarding the matter, it's not about, ha ha, we won, we got you. It's about us both looking in the direction, you know, side by side and saying, these cunts were smart. The, by far the most brilliant military force man has ever seen, the Knights of Malta. And that was the finest. That's as fine as fine gets. The Siege of Malta. And there have been many brave warriors since. It's not to take away their part. It's just to say that's the pinnacle. Um, so, you know, people of a Ottoman, a Turkish background shouldn't be discouraged and be like, oh, that's against our pride. It's no, 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 no. Ultimately, we're going to be standing side by side as brothers, as Turkish, Austra Turkish Australians and Maltese Australians, perhaps one day to defend our sacred land, Australia. So it's about us both looking in the same direction and saying, that's the Siege of Malta. That's tactics and strategy. That's what it looks like. Come watch it with me. That's what I'm saying. So don't don't think that this very short, well, not short clip, this documentary I'm about to refer you to is about boasting. It's about learning. It's about, yeah, no, this is brilliance. This is tactics at its, you know, at its height, at its strat tactics and strategy. You can't be, Okay. So this is the uh, this is the actual documentary. This bloke is a was an ex Green Beret or a Green Beret. This is the uh, the best documentary on the internet regarding the matter. There's probably about 20, 30 documentaries. There's fucking more documentaries on the siege of Malta than there is of Roman battles. It's fucking phenomenal. But this, in my view, is number one. It does have a bit of glitz and glamour, but he generally depicts everything perfectly and from the soldier's point of view. And his, most importantly, the historical accounts seem to be realistic and exact. So if you don't want to study 20 years of Maltese history or the Siege of Malta, I can understand that. So I'll just tell you that if you want to understand how good they were in a nutshell, this is what you watch. This one. This is what you put into YouTube. If you're not watching this, it's a bad. it's probably a bad documentary. I've seen some hilarious ones. This is generally very accurate and a very good one just to give you a good idea of what went on in the siege.